In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to customize the WooCommerce product page using Elementor Pro. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. If you look at my screen, you'll see a standard WooCommerce product page. So we have the image, the title, some of your meta. We have the add to cart area, which includes the variations dropdowns. And if you use free events, it'll also be the booking selector and the seating selector. And then if you scroll down, we have tabs and later products at the bottom of here. So now for an event, we're gonna wanna change all of this and kind of simplify it and make it feel less like a traditional retail product page and more like an event product page. Page. So to do this, we're going to head over to the dashboard and you're going to go to templates. Just before we continue, make sure you have uh, Elementor and Elementor Pro installed and activated already, obviously along with Free Events and WooCommerce and all the standard uh, plugins you'd need to run an event site using Free Events. So now we're going to go over to Theme Builder. This is going to load the various templates that we can modify. We're going to modify the single product template. So you can open that. So now this is going to load the Elementor uh, page builder interface with the single product template. So you're going to either choose from a predefined template. They've got a couple that they're going to, they're going to show to us, or you can create your own from scratch. So we're going to skip over the predefined ones. They don't really fit in with the aesthetic we want to go for. So we're going to create one from scratch. So you can just close this over here and then we're going to set up our page. So to get started, I kind of want a single column centered layout for this product page. So we're going to choose this option over here to add your three columns and then we're going to advanced and we're just going to add a little margin at the top and bottom. Let's make it a little bit bigger, 80. Okay, now we need to add the different parts of the product page to this template. Now, because this is the single product page template, if you go to the Elementor Elements section, you'll see a whole bunch of new options that you don't normally see on the other pages, which are essentially the different parts of the product page. So if we take a look, you'll find the product title, which we're just gonna drag over here. We're not going to modify them just yet. We'll come back to that. Let's first add everything that we want to see and then we'll uh, rearrange it and change the settings for each of these items so that it looks like the aesthetic we're going for. Next, we want to add the short description. Drop it back there. Then we're going to add the price over here. I then want to add the image. So this will be the product image or the product gallery. So we're just gonna drag this across over here. And then beneath that, we're gonna add the add to cart section. And then below that, we want to add the product data tabs. Okay, so that's all we are really gonna add. You can add uh, anything you need to for yours. There's a whole bunch of options here. You can also add the standard items. So if you wanna add a heading, another image that's not part of your product, um, you can do that here too. Okay, so now next thing is to style this uh, based on what we what we want to achieve. So I'd like the title to be larger and I'd like it to be centered. So I'm going to center it and I'm going to go to typography and get a font size, nice round number. Let's make it 46. Um, that looks great. And then the description, this is a very short description. Most of my descriptions are generally, you know, two or three sentences. So they'll look a little bit different here. Um, I also want this to be closer to uh, the title. And the title has this uh, padding at the, over here. So what I'm gonna do, a quick and easy way to do that is I'm going to set a negative margin at the top, just to nudge this a little higher. And then we're gonna do the same with the typography, uh, with the title. We're gonna do the same with the pricing. We're gonna to go to advanced and we're just gonna set a negative margin, like this one, minus 40. Okay, so that looks good. Image is fine as it is. So with the add to cart area, I want this to stand out a little. So we're gonna to go to advanced and we're gonna give it a padding of 30. I'm gonna to go to background and I'm gonna set a color for it. Just gonna make it white. And then I'm gonna to go to border. I'm gonna set a very subtle border with a width of one and we're going to make it very light nice and subtle okay and then a slight drop shadow and again i want this to be subtle don't want it to be too jarring that looks good so now the next thing i want to do is again use a negative margin i want this to overlap 
the image and I want to bring it a little bit in to make it a little bit narrower. So we're going to start off with putting a margin on each side, 30 pixels, and then a negative margin. Let's make it minus 100. So that looks kind of cool. It's overlapping the image, or if it's the gallery, it'll be overlapping without interfering with the ability to click on the gallery icons. So that should work quite well. And then I just want this to match this line over here. So I'm just going to put a margin on the sides as well. Okay, so here we have our product page, nice and centered, only showing what we need. And it feels a little bit more conducive to an event. You know, event, we don't want the typical retail structure with all these things. We want nice centered, you know, title, picture, price, and the ability to add it to cart, and then any additional information we need at the bottom over here. So let's start off with saving this as a draft. Okay. And then next, we need to determine what uh, products is, is going to display for. So to do that, we're going to go to display conditions, you know, add a condition, and we're going to say include for all products. So this is going to be the default template for all products. The display conditions can also be used to set it based on category, child product categories, tags, or author. We're going to have a look at the category one a little bit later, but for now, let's uh, set this as the default template that all our products are going to use. Okay, so let's go to the live site. So I've saved those options and I've saved that setting. And there it is, Foo Hoodie. This is the meta description and the price. Here we have the image. We have the add to cart section over here. And again, any uh, extended functionality of the add to cart functions, such as bookings or seating, or perhaps use a third party uh, plugin to add additional options, they'll display here as well. And then at the bottom, we have our product tabs. So let's have a look at what this looks like for other products. So we're going to go to shop. Here we have a bunch of example products. Let's have a look at the beanie with logo. That also uses this template. So this doesn't use variations. So it just uses the very basic form of the add to cart functionality. Let's have a look at a slightly different one. So here we have a collection, which is a group of products. And you'll see displays the different options as you'd expect. And we also have a nice gallery over there, overlap slacking, which looks cool. And then last but not least, we can have a look at a Foo Events product. So this is a product with Foo Events functionality enabled. Let's have a look at this bookable service or event. So title, description, everything looking good. Here we have our variation functionality. So that all looks really cool. Very happy with that. So the next step is what do we want to do if we want to customize the template for a specific product? So in our example, we're going to look at a conference product. So for this one, what I'd like to do is add a countdown timer to the start of the event. Now, if I add a countdown timer to the template we we're looking at earlier in its current form, all the products would see that countdown timer, which wouldn't make sense. So we need to add it exclusively for this event. So to do that, we're going to go edit product. And we're going to make sure that this is tagged to a unique category that we can refer to. So let's call this Comp 2024. Add that as a category. Okay. Make sure it's tagged. And then we're going to update this. Okay, so this is the only product tagged to that specific that particular category. We're then going to go to tickets and back, sorry, templates and back to theme builder and we're gonna create a new one. So go to single product, add, add new. And then we're gonna essentially take the existing one that we've already built and we're gonna copy it for this one. So if you go to my templates, this is the one that we just built. I'm gonna insert that there. So it saves us having to do that all over again. We're just gonna use that as our starting point. Okay. Okay, so we're back to where we started. The main difference is that this is a new template that we can customize to behave differently to the default template. So before we forget, let's go to display options, add a condition, select in category, and from here, search for the category that we just created, comp 2024, 
and we're gonna save and close. So now this template will only apply to that product because that product is tagged to the Conf 2024 category. So it's pretty simple. Okay, now let's modify this and add that countdown timer. So we're gonna search for countdown timer and we're gonna drag it to just above the image. This is a standard Elementor Pro one. We just gotta modify the time. So let's say our event is on the 26th of October and we're gonna change the styling just to fit in with our aesthetic. So let's make the background white. Let's change the text colors, make it nice and dark. Make it a little lighter. Maybe make the fonts a little bit smaller. This is of course based on your preference. You can modify these as needed. And we're going to make the width a little bit smaller. And let's put a slight border on 1px, very nice and subtle. And we'll give it a border radius of 20. Okay, so let's update that. Okay, now if we go back to our site and we head over to the conference page, the conference product, you'll see a nice countdown timer at the top of the page. So this will help your customers feel a little bit of urgency in booking the ticket. You could also add a countdown timer uh, and inform them when tickets are going to close, which could be a, you know, a few days or a few weeks before your event, and use that to build urgency in actually following through and purchasing the ticket. Or this could just be a reminder of how many days it is until the event. So the rest of the functionality would work pretty much stock standard. So if you go book now, it'll add it to cart. Go to other products, go to the beanie with a logo you'll see it uses the default template and not this event template that we modified and that's it really simple straightforward way to modify your product pages using elementor pro and you can modify them to whatever your requirements are the tools are very extensive very easy to use and you can virtually turn these pages into anything you want. if you have any questions drop it in the comment section or get in touch with our team at help.freeevents.com